This video covers material that goes over the concept of water pollution, the types of contaminants that may be found in water, and lastly, how is water quality determined. The material presented was originally developed by John Bentz and modified and narrated by Alan Rodriguez. This video is made possible by the National Science Foundation funded project Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom at Ohio University. Now, I have some questions for you. Do you know what is water pollution? Or do you know what types of contaminants are or may be present in water? If you answer no to any of these questions, or even if you feel you should review these concepts, then I invite you to study and review with me the presentation titled Water Pollution, Contaminants and Testing Procedures. Now, before we can enter in full detail on our discussion about water quality and contaminants, we will briefly go over basic definitions and concepts about water pollution. Join me as I discuss further this topic. So what is water pollution? Water pollution is defined as any change in water quality that harms humans or other living organisms or makes water unsuitable for desired uses. See, it's very interesting to see how the quality of the river and the contaminants in it can significantly affect the outer environment. In the picture shown, we see a river which suffered a spill of crude oil. Some of us can call it petroleum, which eventually caught up on fire and caused environmental and population disasters. So yes, a river can burn with the proper set of chemicals dissolved in the water. So because of the constant frequency of environmental disasters on water bodies, in 1972, the Clean Water Act was instituted, which is today even a federal law that regulates the amount and type of industrial weight sent to water. It provides standards for allowed pollutants and requires businesses to obtain a permit and to monitor any discharge from the facility. There's also the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, which are guidelines by which the, any business that relates into a body of water must follow. These permits differ and are unique to each business. So, a uh, fair question to us now will be, what are the sources of water pollution? So, they can be two types of sources, either point sources or non-point sources. The point surface can be traced back to one particular origin. For example, industrial plants, such as power, chemical, or waste treatment, drain pipes, sewer lines, and underground mines. Non-point sources tend to be widespread with, within many regions contributing to the water pollution. An example could be agricultural runoff or stormwater runoff such in roads and parking lots. Among the most common types of contaminants of water body, we find pathogens, which may come from waste of humans or animals, plant nutrients, such as nitrates and phosphates, organics, such as oil, gasoline, plastics, pesticides, inorganics, such as salt and metal compounds, sediments, such as suspended solids, heavy metals, and thermal contaminants. Now, let's enter the second part of our discussion. Now we'll talk about how we have been able to standardize the water quality and what parameters are currently measured to determine the water quality. The most commonly tested parameters are temperature, pH, nitrates, phosphates, dissolved oxygen, turbidity, specific conductivity, total dissolved solids, and total suspended solids. Now we'll discuss briefly each one by one. Temperature. So temperature, in a simple definition, 
is basically the measure of how warm, hot, or cold something is. Usually it's measured in Celsius, but it may be measured as well in Fahrenheit. Now, as we go on through the tested parameter, feel free to pause the video to learn and read over more details of each particular parameter. pH is basically the measure of acidity or alkalinity, how acid or basic something is. It is known that the lower the number in the pH scale, the more acid is, and the more and the higher the number in the pH scale, the more basic or alkaline is. Neutral pH is considered to be 7. Nitrates. So nitrates are usually residues that come from waste water treatment facility discharge, leaky septic systems, runoff from fertilized agricultural fields, and industrial runoff. It's important to understand that nitrates are measured because excess nitrates could, excess nitrates could lead to algae growth and depleted dissolved oxygen, which will kill the fish or any other living organisms in the water that requires oxygen. Here is the nitrates cycle. Feel free to pause the video to see the cycle and understand it better. Phosphates. So phosphates as nitrates usually come from wastewater treatment facility discharge, fertilizers, mining waste, and decaying organic matter. As nitrate, excess phosphates and nitrates could lead to algae growth and deplete oxygen, which will end up killing the organisms living within. Dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is equivalent to the oxygen that humans breathe. The only difference is that now it's dissolved in water. So oxygen is dissolved in water, and as a matter of fact, fish and other living organisms use oxygen to breathe inside the water. If there's not enough oxygen dissolved in water, then we will have a significant problem. Turbidity. Turbidity is a measure of how clear or dirty the water sample is. Turbidity is measured by using a transparency tube. The bottom of the transparency tube has a sachy disc and you, can, and you may see on your right. When you start filling it up with water, the colors at the bottom start disappearing or, no longer, or you will no longer appreciate them because of the dissolved solids, minerals and other waste in the water. Once you stop seeing the bottom, you will measure the height in centimeters. Specific conductivity is a measure of how much salt is in the water. And total dissolved solids are a measure of ions, minerals, among other chemicals in water. Finally, total suspended solids is basically a measure of how much sediment, algae, or fine particulates are suspended within a water sample. Water quality index. So the water quality index, or WQI, is a measure of how polluted a body of water actually is. It can take many different parameters into consideration. But considering mainly the ones we discussed previously is how water quality index is determined. The higher the number, the higher the quality of the water. Thanks for your attention.